Good morning, church. This is the Morning Devo, or as it's been advertised all week, the Daily Devotion with Darren and Deanna Decker. <laughs> and the king of alliteration, Jason Lee, ought to really love all those Ds. My name's Darren. And I'm Deanna. And uh, this week we've been going through the Passion Week, or Holy Week, the uh, events that led up to uh, Easter, uh, the last days of Jesus uh, as a man on this earth before his resurrection on Sunday, Easter. So um, today we're going to pick it up where we left off yesterday. And before we get there, I know some of you are going, wow, he's wearing the same shirt as yesterday. Now here's the deal. I didn't wear it all day. I just wore it for the devotions, okay? It's one of my favorite shirts. It's, uh, I call it my Matt Brumley or my Jay Horn shirt because Jay has a shirt exactly like this. Matt Brumley wears Magellan shirts all the time. Um, I also wore it in Peru. My wife bought me this shirt for Peru because it breathed and it was very humid and hot there. And then I also wore it for Grandpa Henry. Uh, there's some wisdom in that. And so it's one of my favorite shirts. And so that's why I wore it again. So <laughs> don't worry, it's clean. Anyway, so we're going to talk. Um, it's Thursday, April 8th. I don't think I said that yet. Uh, this is devotion number, I don't know, Four. five, six, seven, eight or something like It's our fourth but I think that makes it eight, right? So um, we're gonna pick it up right at where uh, Jesus is having his last supper with the disciples in Matt. We're gonna do it in Matthew 26, and I'm gonna have Deanna read that for us. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So that um, couple of different things in there is, uh, that's why it's called the Last Suppers, because he says he's never going to eat or drink again until... Um, until uh, the final, until he comes back, until we go to heaven, basically. And so it is his last supper here on earth. And uh, they were actually meeting for the Passover meal, but it ends up being his last supper. Um, I know this is a very important thing to all Christians uh, to uh, go ahead and do communion, what we call communion, which is performing the last supper, mm -hmm. doing this in remembrance of what Christ did for us, that he broke his body and shed his blood for the remission of sins, for the forgiveness of all sins of everybody, whoever trusts in Christ, puts their life in the, in the hands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. So that's why we do it. And we make it, a, I know at uh, the Church on Master's Road, we make it a central part of our worship. It's at the middle of the service. We take the time so that everybody can stop for a moment, um, agree with God, get with God, um, and just commune with Him. And so... Um, Communion's always been a very special and uh, reverent time uh, for myself, and I know it has been for you as, to, uh, as well, Deanna. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, our family would sit together in a pew during the service, kind of like Gary and Gail do now, with their family all sitting together. And often, I would sit by my grandma. And I remember, as a junior high student, when we would do communion, my grandma would weep. And as a junior high student, that would embarrass me. Mm -hmm. I thought grandma's crying in church and that was just embarrassing. As an adult looking back, that gives me such great joy to know that my grandma understood what the Last Supper was, what communion was and how special that was. And I'm so thankful for that. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I, I really haven't picked up in the past uh, because there's so many other things that we look at uh, when it comes to the Last Supper and, and uh, that I never really recognized or called attention to the fact that they sang a hymn. Mm -hmm. At the end of the meal, they sang a hymn. At the end of the event, they sang a hymn together. And uh, it doesn't say what hymn they sang, but it's recorded that they all sang a worship song together. And so I love that when we do that. And I know you love that too. When we do that at the end of service, it just kind of sets our hearts right and it gets our, I don't know, I really like that so um, that's another thing I, I got out of, out of that as well. So they're heading to the garden uh, so that Jesus can pray, and he's, he's brought a couple of guys with him, I guess. We'll just pick it up here in verse 36 in Matthew uh, 26, uh, verse 36. 
Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sourful, sourful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter, Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. So there's a lot to unpack there, but mm -hmm. here's Jesus. Um, he's saying he's overwhelmed, um, that uh, uh, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow uh, to the point of death. Uh, so if Jesus, the Son of God, can be overwhelmed it's okay for you to feel overwhelmed too. And we've all been there where we feel overwhelmed. And notice what he did. He was with his friends though, you know? So it's a good idea to reach out to your friends. And, and his friends fell asleep. I mean, come on. Um, our friends will disappoint us sometimes too. But that's not the lesson here, right? The lesson is, is that he's praying, you know? And he's, and he's lifting up his concerns and his this big, big moment where he knows gonna, he's gonna have to give up his life. And uh, he's asking God, if there's any way that we can do it some other way, can we do it that way? But he doesn't waste a moment and he says, but not my will, your will. And we've all been there too, where we don't think God's doing it the way we do it, as if we're smarter than God somehow. And a lot of that comes from maybe we don't understand what God is doing. And uh, we've all been in those tough times and we may never understand what God is doing, but here's the, the lesson that we can learn from Jesus. Your will, not my will. And so um, even though he was, went away three times praying, these guys kept falling asleep on him. This had to be a hard night for him. And here comes one of his disciples, one of his closest to betray him to the religious leaders. And boy, what a bummer. You know, what a bummer to see this guy coming in and then he gives him a kiss on the cheek to say, you know, it's going to be the one I kiss. And, uh, and then Jesus gets arrested and that's where we leave it. That's the, before all the trial and before all the beating and stuff, that's where we're going to leave it today too. And, um, um, it's pretty sad. It's a pretty sad moment, mm -hmm. but we got Easter coming. And that's when all this sorrow was turned to joy. And I know that you have a special memory about that. Growing up in our church, we had a Monday Thursday service and we had a big gold cross in the front of the mm -hmm. church. And at the end of the service, it was very somber and quiet and they would slowly um, put a veil down over the cross and we would leave the church very quietly. And on Sunday morning, it was my favorite Sunday at church every year because it would start out with the choir singing Alleluia, Jesus Christ is risen today. And very quickly that veil would be brought up over the cross and it, I just remember my heart pounding as that would happen. And so that is gonna be our challenge for you today. Okay. Is I know we're leaving today on kind of a somber note in scripture, but the celebration is coming and that's happening on Sunday. So we want you to take pictures of what a celebration looks like to you. I don't know if that's confetti. I don't know if it's jumping up and down. Um, but whatever it is, take a picture of what celebration means to you. Maybe even hold up a little sign that said, Jesus Christ is risen today, or Jesus um, is coming back, or Jesus loves you. Whatever it is, take a picture and send that in. And again, we'd like to send you a pizza party in a box. So we can't wait to see those. So um, this is our last devotion for the week. I think the Brumleys are picking it up next week. So here's my shout out to Matt Brumley. Maybe he has a Magellan shirt he can, he can wear. 
Um, but uh, do you want to pray us out or do you want me to? Go ahead. Okay. Father God, just thank you so much for this time this week that we've got to spend in your word and to uh, discover what you went through uh, in your last week here. And we know the story's not over, that uh, you have written a great story and that you have risen, you have conquered death. And we can conquer death by just accepting what you did on that cross mm -hmm. for each and every one of us. And so we put our faith and our trust and our hope in you mm -hmm. this morning and every morning. And we thank you for what you did, your sacrifice. And so we thank you in advance of all the things you're doing in our lives and how you're working out all of these things for our good and for your glory. Mm -hmm. And we just pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So um, maybe there's one other thing you could do. Uh, since we can't get together for communion at the church, maybe that's something you could do at the house with the family. Just uh, get a little grape juice and maybe a little bread, or uh, if you don't have those, you can substitute something else, but go ahead and do communion. Mm -hmm. All right, journey on, church. Because the journey is on.